Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. I hope you all had an amazing weekend. It was a very, very eventful one. It was free comic book day on Saturday. It was Mother's Day yesterday. Hope you guys got your mom some great comic books. But it is Monday, and that means that we got to take a look at GoCollect's hottest comics for the week of May 5th. Now, for those who don't know, GoCollect puts out a bi-weekly article that switches between hottest comics and trending comics. This week, it's hottest comics, and we're talking about volume of sales, what has been moving the most in the market. But before I get into the video, if you guys could drop me a like or comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, Help support the channel doing those things, I would appreciate it. But let us get into this article here today. Of course, I will put a link in the description. This article is written by Matt Tuck if you guys want to do further reading. But let's get right into the number five book. And the number five book is this one right here, The Last Ronin, number one, up 35 spots, sitting in the 38th slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, this, of course, is the book written by Kevin Eastman, a book that came out at the end of 2020 and would be a mini series exploring the last remaining Ninja Turtle on the squad known as The Last Ronin. And this was a really, really awesome awesome series comic book collectors were going crazy for this thing. There were like a, a, a million bajillion uh, different prints of this thing with variant covers. But when this came out at the time, it was a very, very hot book in the market. Now as to why this book got hot this week, well, as I mentioned, it was a mini series and it took basically a year and a half to get us to the final fifth installment, which came out, you know, just a couple weeks ago. And I think that was one of the reasons why there was a sudden uptick for this book in the market is because we got the final issue of the mini series. And there was a lot of collectors that were looking to, you know, maybe pick up that last run in number one. Maybe they were fans of the series. Maybe they were reminded, hey, I should probably get that first print of issue number one. And so everybody was chasing those graded copies. And speaking of which, when we dig into the numbers, let's take a look here. There's actually a couple 10.0s on the census, and there's actually quite a few 9.9s. There's 200 right there. But let's focus in on the 9.8s. 2100 on the census. Fair market value has them at the $150 range. 30 day moving is 159. So not a book necessarily selling at all new record highs. I think actually some of the peak price for this book were uh, when it initially had come out, you know, at the beginning of January in 2021 or December of 2020. Uh, and then, you know, the book has kind of held a pretty decent ceiling uh, throughout, you know, its life cycle. But, you know, generally speaking, I think, again, like I mentioned, the reason the book is selling this week is because, you know, collectors just want to have their complete set uh, issues one through five, and it looks great in a slab, so why not pick it up? All right, let's move on now to the fourth hottest comic of the week. And the fourth hottest comic of the week is a book that I'm sure you guys are very well aware of, a book that's been been on many, many hot lists uh, over the last, you know, couple months or so. And actually forgot to mention and talk about an eventful week. And we also got the release of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which I don't think this is a spoiler to say this, but this book has some affiliation with that. But we're talking about New Avengers number seven, up 36 spots, sitting in the 28th slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, you guys know this is the first appearance of the group known as the Illuminati, a book written by Brian Michael Bendis that came out in 2005. Now, this is one of those books that absolutely exploded when we got the Doctor Strange Super Bowl trailer that hinted at the fact that we were going to be getting the Illuminati in the actual movie. And then, of course, here we are some months later, the movie's actually coming out. So that's going to create, you know, movement in the market. People are thinking, hey, you know, I actually want to get pick up this book. I'm excited about the Doctor Strange film. Maybe they saw the Doctor Strange film. Maybe they want to pick up a book as a result of it. Uh, but whatever the case may be, the new Avenger 7 is definitely moving uh, in the market. Also, on the flip side, though, you could make the argument that maybe there's people who want to capitalize on selling their copies of new Avenger 7 because they know the Doctor Strange movie is out. They know the Illuminati is in it. So they're, you know, looking to make a sale while everyone is talking about this group right here. But in my opinion, I think that this still is a great book to have in your collection. I think the Illuminati is one of the coolest uh, organizations that was created in comic books. So even outside of Doctor Strange, MCU spec. I think this is still a great book to have in the collection and one that I think will still be cherished by collectors many years in the future. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look here. We got 494 9.8s on the census. Fair market value for those suggests 375. 30 day moving is 394. Uh, 90 day moving, however, was 453. So definitely you can see huge spike up right here when we got that initial Super Bowl trailer. But as things do, you know, once uh, the FOMO starts to cool, the book sort of starts to settle, find a new floor. Uh, we can see here now the book selling around the, uh, here was a 266, someone got a steal. Here's a 334, here's a 395, here's a 390. So, you know, selling around that, I'd say, 
high $300 level or so. Of course, it's a 2005 book, not gonna see it slab at the low grade, but now, you know, when you go into eBay looking for raw copies on this thing, uh, people are selling it around the, you know, $50 to $55 range or so. So definitely a book that I think is going to be a key that people value in the future, but may not ever eclipse those former ceilings we saw previously. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think about this book overall? What do you guys think about the Illuminati? Uh, let's not try to get into spoiler territory with the comments here, be respectful of others who maybe didn't see the movie, uh, but I think we can all know and assume, even if you haven't seen it, that the Illuminati is gonna be in the film. I still think that the Illuminati has a future in the MCU. I think Doctor Strange, uh, the 616 version of Doctor Strange or the MCU version of Doctor Strange might eventually form them. All right, let's move on now to the third hottest comic of the week. And the third hottest comic of the week is one that is pretty interesting to talk about, actually. This one right here is Spawn number nine, up 42 slots, sitting in the 27th slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, this would actually be uh, the Spawn series that was created by Tom McFarlane, but this would be issue number nine that was written by Neil Gaiman, a book that came out in 1993 and would feature the first appearance of a character known as Angela. Now, this is a book that has an interesting sort of complicated history in the comic book space. Neil Gaiman had created this character of Angela under the Spawn umbrella, but later on he would be, you know, uh, fighting control rights with the character with Todd McFarlane. Eventually it would get settled. Neil Gaiman would gain control of it, but then Neil Gaiman would end up selling the character's rights to Marvel comic books. So now we have Angela actually in the Marvel universe, and she effectively in canon to Marvel Comics is the daughter of Odin. So a very kind of interesting history that this character was created in the Spawn comic books, but now is a character in Marvel comic books. And for that reason, because she is attached to Odin and the Asgardians and all that stuff, people have been speculating that she could be a character showing up in Thor Love and Thunder. And based on where we are in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we know that the next movie to be coming out is going to be Thor Love and Thunder. So that probably created, you know, some speculation in the market, some movement in the market, and people were looking to pick up those spawn number nines. But whether or not we see this character in the MCU, she definitely has a cult following. A lot of people, big fans of her from her early days in Spawn. You know, I think she's currently leading the As Guardians of the Galaxy in Marvel Comics. So she does have her own sort of cult following, which makes this book pretty special overall. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll take a look here, 9.8 level, 2,411 on the census. Fair market value suggests one. 50, 30 day moving is 160. Uh, that's you know a little bit lower than the one year moving, but you can see there's been a little bit of an uptick for this book because people are starting to think, you know, hey, maybe she's a sleeper character to be showing up in Thor Love and Thunder, but a far cry from where it was at its height, you know, during uh, the 2021 market boom. I mean, at, at certain points, this book was selling for $300. And then of course, down here at the bottom, 1993 book, you're not gonna see it slabbed at the low grade. But now when you go into eBay looking for this thing, you know, you can find buy it now sitting around that 20 dollar price point or so. All right, let's move on now to the second hottest comic of the week. And the second hottest comic of the week is a great book, if you ask me. This one is Amazing Spider-Man, number four, up 49 slots, sitting in the 46th slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this would be the first appearance of Cindy Moon, aka Silk, uh, one of the Spider-Verse characters that was created by Dan Slott in 2014. Of course, Silk, since her creation, has been kind of a fan favorite amongst the comic book collectors. Collectors. I mean, anytime you're going to create a new Spider-Verse character, whether it's Ghost Spider or Miles Morales or Silk or, you know, Spider-Woman or whatever the case may be, there's always going to be a, you know, fandom of Spider-Man fans that are going to flock to this character. So Silk is kind of one of those people who I would actually kind of stack rank her as being a top six spider character. Let me know what you guys think. Where does Silk stand in the rankings of spider characters? Uh, regardless, I think she's a very, very cool character. And there's been a lot of speculation for quite some time that Silk was gonna be you know, showing up in the Sony-verse. Maybe she was gonna be showing up in the MCU, like possibly getting a series or you know, a lot of speculation that Olivia Wilde's movie is gonna be about Silk. But regardless, it does feel like there's been a lot of conversation about bringing Silk to the silver screen in some kind of way. And this book has sort of had a kind of you know, tumultuous uh, up and down with its values and everything like that. But where it is currently in the market, I do think that it's actually a pretty good buy. And one of the reasons why I think it's one of the hottest comics this week is that this book has actually dropped off quite a bit to the point where, you know, people are thinking about, you know, this book being a good spec buy, in my opinion. I think that the floor right now is at a really good sweet spot where it doesn't feel like um, very high risk at all. And if we ever do get that project or movie or whatever the case, this definitely feels like a book that has a very, very high ceiling 
sitting in front of it. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll take a look here. Uh, there actually is a 10.0 on the census and a couple 9.9s, but let's focus in on the 9.8 grades here. The book does have a pretty high census count at 5,010 copies. Fair market value suggested to be 325, 30 day moving 334, uh, but a book that's definitely has dropped off quite a bit. You can see here in uh, 2021, it was a book that was flirting with that $500 price point at 436, but has had that correction. And it's kind of held, held steady right here at the you know mid 300 level. But you know if people are thinking about this character having the possibility not to necessarily be as big as Spider-Gwen or Miles Morales, but we think about the values of those books. And if we think that this book can maybe be you know a third of that or half of that, it definitely feels like this could be a, a four figure book in the future. And then down here at the bottom, you know, new book, not gonna be slapped at the low grade, but typically speaking, when you go into eBay looking for rock copy, you can find them selling around that $175 to $200 range or so. All right, well, let's go on now to the hottest comic of the week. And the hottest comic of the week is a book that has been hot for the last couple weeks due to trailers and what is to come in the MCU. And this one, of course, is Thor number one, up 53 slots, now as the number three book in all of the market. And what is the significance of this? Well, this, of course, is the book by Jason Aaron that came out in 2014. That would be the first cover appearance and maybe be a second cameo appearance, or I guess maybe third cameo appearance, depending on how you want to, you know, uh, argue the initial cameo appearances. But this right here is effectively what the market views as the Jane Foster as Thor book to own. Of course, recently we got that Thor Love and Thunder teaser. And at the end of the teaser, we saw Natalie Portman wielding Mjolnir, uh, taking up the mantle of the character of Thor. This book right here blew up in the market. In fact, all of her cameo books blew up in the market, even the What If book. Um, had a lot of movement in the market. Anything Jane Foster Thor was definitely moving, but this book seems to be the one that most collectors, if they're a fan of this character, want to get their hands on. I think anytime you see the character on the cover, you know, this is sort of one of those Bishop scenarios. Uh, this is gonna be the book that people are gonna gravitate to the most. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll take a look here. 9.8, 2,664 on the census. Fair market value suggested to be 280. 30 day moving is around 313. Uh, you know, definitely a book that that uh, has set new record prices recently, although you know some of the averages might have been higher during the comic book boom of 2021. Um, so let's see here, you know, last couple sales, we have 290, 280, 285, 280. So actually it been last couple sales under the $300 uh, range or so, uh, which is a little bit of a correction based on where it initially was selling at the height of the trailer when everybody was excited about this book, but essentially a book selling at that $300 level around the 9.8 grades. And then of course, 2014 book, not gonna be slapped at the low grade, but when you go onto eBay looking for raw copies, typically you can find them being sold around that $100 price point or so. Well, that is all I have for this video. That was Go Collect's hottest comics for the week of May 5th. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have any of these books? Are you chasing any of them? Let me know what you guys picked up for free comic book day. I mean, I had my claim sale this last weekend. I wanna say thank you to everyone who joined us. Hopefully you guys had a good time and got picked up some great books. What did you guys do during free comic book day? Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content and I will see you in the next video.